the world is going through changes. Changes happening at a speed that we have never seen before. This is leading to disruption, chaos, panic, fear, hysteria, and a turbulent economy and marketplace. How do you protect your wealth in a turbulent world? How do you invest for cash flow in alternative assets to escape the rat race in times of uncertainty? How do you decentralize yourself, your family, your community, your business, and your investments to become sovereign and escape the matrix? If you are looking for strategies, tactics, and techniques to escape the rat race and matrix, you are in the right place. My name is MC Lobsher, and this is Cashflow Ninja. This is Cashflow Ninja. I'm MC Lobsher. Thank you so much for joining me for another episode and spending your most valuable resource, your time, once again with me. Everything Cashflow Ninja is at CashflowNinja.com. That's CashflowNinja.com. I've got a fantastic show for you today. I'm joined by Brian Beers. We're going to talk about all things franchising and why now is a fantastic time to actually buy a franchise. Brian, it's great to see you. Hey, MC. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we, we're kicking off the new year, and I couldn't think of uh, a better person to have on to talk about a topic that a lot of people have been asking about, uh, franchising and how to buy franchises. But before we get into that, we've got a, a ton of new listeners and viewers out there. Can you just please share a little bit about your background, your journey, and what you're up to these days? Yeah, so Brian Beers, I you know live in the Philadelphia suburbs, or almost neighbors, the 36 years old. I've been franchising, you know, my entire life. Uh, as of today, my brother and I, you know, we operate uh, over 30 automotive repair franchises here in the, the Philly, Jersey area. We just bought the rights to develop uh, the entire greater Philadelphia area for a painting franchise. Uh, I failed at two other franchises and I've got this whole business where I help people buy uh, and scale franchises. So it is my life. I believe it is the greatest business model in the world. And, uh, you know, I'm happy to, to kind of dive into it and, and talk about all that stuff. Yeah, let's let's start there. Tell me why you think it's the greatest business model because um we've had conversations where you're like if I well if I compare this to real estate, you know, yep. this is this is kind of like what it looks like. So please tell please tell a little bit more about why you think this is the greatest business model and why you are so passionate about franchises. Yep. Yeah, and I guess as a disclaimer to start, there's 3000 franchises in the US and many of them are not good. Many of them are mediocre, right? What I'm going to talk about at the level is the ones that kind of are 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 the best ones that provide the most kind of support. So this is not universal. I think that's like a key part of of franchising why sometimes maybe it gets a bad rap is cuz someone get, people get into things that kind of really they're sold kind of this this thing that's not really what they thought it was going to be. And then other people get into ones that they just like it's a rocket ship. So We'll, we'll start A to preference of that. So why I think it's great is, is it, it allows ordinary people to build amazing businesses, right? So ordinary people, just like me, you know, maybe not, maybe not like you, but uh, who've got, you know, they have no MBA, they have no industry experience. They, you know, maybe they've worked, m m most people buying them, you know, they're corporate executives, they've got a high paying W-2 job, they're in like tech sales or healthcare, you know, most of them are in leadership positions and they're really great with people and they're making, you know, I don't know, 200, 300, 400, that's a, you know, a, a year, we got a guy making a million dollars a year who, who we just helped. And then some of them, you know, are, are you know, maybe making a hundred or something and looking of, of how do I grow? But, you know, they don't want to take this like risk of I'm going to go and, and start a brand new business from scratch and, and in an industry I know nothing about. And how do I do the marketing? How do I create the brand? How do I do this? How do I do that? And it can get overwhelming and and then they don't do anything, right? Because like, you know, if you've got this big overwhelming problem for a lot of people, they, they're going to take the path of least resistance. And so, you know, by by finding a great franchise, like you've got this partner who gives you this business in a box that says, here is the playbook, here's how you make you know money. And they're going to take decades of experience and knowledge and all this stuff, and they're going to compact it into days of training for you. And so ordinary people, no MBA, no, no industry experience can get into a business they know nothing about, but they're really good at leaders. They're really good with people and they can, they can hire great people. They can follow a system and they've got this whole community around them, you know, just like just like your community, who who support and help each other grow because they're all running the same business across the country. So that's like the, the short of it of of why you know I, I believe it's the best business and it's changed my life and, and many of my many of my friends. 
And if you compare it to to real estate too, I mean, um, maybe you can sh share that because you've yeah. shared a couple of of reasons why this is is um, you know preferable for you to, to real estate. What are some What are some of those well, reasons? I think you're playing different games, right? In the franchise yeah. business, it's a business that happens to be a franchise, right? So, like a business, you can create a ton of value very quickly. You can go out, you can you can, you can hire those people, you can follow the process, you can you can make money very quickly by doing it. Real estate, it's a little different of a game. It's a long-term game, right? Like you're buying the single family or the duplex or whatever it is. And, you know, you're putting a whole bunch of money probably back into it through CapEx and making a couple hundred bucks a month. And it's like a grind. And, you know, at the end of 10 or 20 years, yeah, you've got this, you know, nice portfolio, but it, it, it depends what you're trying to do. If you're trying to build cash flow, then, you know, owning a business, even if it's not a franchise, but any business is going to cash flow way better than, than any piece of real estate. So I think it's part of it's how you position it, right? And even for me, like years ago, you know, I followed the, the bigger pockets path and I was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be a real estate investor and, and all this stuff. Even why I had these these franchises when we were much, you know, much smaller. You know, we were buying these single family homes and you know, renting them out and like making two hundred dollars a month, quote unquote, on paper. But in reality, it was, you know, root oofs always leaking, like tenants not paying, evictions, toilets being clogged, someone died, like all these things. And my phone's like, and I had a property management company too. And my phone's blowing up. And at the end of the day, I'm like, why am I like spending all this like mental energy and time for like not a huge return, right? And I could, if I took all that time and energy and I invested it into growing my business, like I can, I can make millions more, right? So uh, so anyway, that, like, that's my strategy now, you know, all, all the real estate that I invest in is, you know, through syndications, uh, with really great operating partners who, who they get to deal with all the headaches and the dead tenants and, you know, all the other stuff. And I can focus on what I'm really good at, which is like creating value in businesses. So if you bring those into tandem, which you did nicely there too, in, in combination with each other, the, the franchise is the, like your business, just that's the cash generator, great cash flow now. And eventually you're going to need a place to park, park the cash that you're generating and that you're investing with great operators and sponsors yep. um, in, in, in different asset classes and niches. Yep. That's a great thing. And I, I do the same thing too. That's why I love it. To do it that way, to invest as a limited partner with a lot of great operators and sponsors, because you can invest, you know, over 10, 15 different asset classes essentially, and directly through private placement memorandums in these syndications, right? Yeah, that's exactly kind of my strategy. And I you know, I, so I, ma I make the money, my order, I'm not going to get an investment strategy here, but like, you know, my order is like, you know, we make money in the, in, in our business. A, we yep. look to see, can we reinvest back into our own business? I mean, we've had deals, you know, we bought additional franchises, seller financed, you know, I put $50,000 down on, on a deal and it made me 400 grand the next year. Like, some, cause we're good operators, right? Cause we can create that value. And then we're, we reinvest back into buying more franchises. Like we talked about the, the painting business or whatever. And then it's like, if I can't invest in my own business, then it's, yeah, the syndic syndications I do. Obviously, you know, the, the whole life policy with you, which is like a great, you know, totally non-correlated, you know, protection of assets. Uh, I just did oil, an oil and gas deal with some, with some really good operators. That I think both has tax and, and cash flow benefits, you know, multifamily development, self-storage. I mean, like I said, you, you name it, I'm, I'm probably getting into it. Um, and so anyway, I think it's I think it's a great strategy for me, and it's you know I don't because I don't need liquidity there, like I don't need cash flow honestly from it. I, I want growth, I want protection. Um, and so anyway, I I just think like a lot of people, they 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 might spend too much time on the investment side that that takes away valuable valuable resources you know in their mind from growing a business that they could they could make way more money growing a business. A franchise or not franchise, whatever, but way more business, way more money growing a business than whatever they would make on that investment. Why is now such a good time for franchises or and to buy a franchise? Yeah, I think I think a number of of reasons. A, um, you know, the time is now, right? For anything, I think people who try to kick the can down the road, like you know, could wake up and get hit by a bus tomorrow, right? Like, I don't know, I. Owning a business is is the way of how you create freedom in your life, right? Freedom to to travel to to wherever you want, to spend time with the people you love, like to live the life you want to live. And I think so many people like just end up, you know, doing the same thing over and over again and and, and really aren't happy with their lives. And 
you know, business is how you unlock that freedom. You know, franchising is kind of puts you in the fast lane by giving you systems and process and you still need to execute. Like there's no guarantees in any of this, but you've, you've got a partner and you're in the fast lane. And so uh, I think a number one, the time is always now, no matter what. Uh, B, I think there's some really interesting opportunities going on now where A, there's this trend in um, in businesses that are like, hey, home services is super popular, right? So we think about, you know, what are, what are the common trends? One trend is that well, interest rates, you know, being so high, you know, if as the real estate market maybe slows down a little bit, people are going to stay in their homes. COVID proved that people want to invest in their homes. And the more time you spend in your home, staring at the walls, the more you think, yeah, maybe we should, you know, maybe I should repaint this room or maybe I should renovate my garage or maybe, you know, we want to fix this or that, right? Um, and becomes more of this space. And maybe if you're not traveling as much because maybe you're trying to save some money, whatever, you're spending more time in your home, you're going to you're gonna spend money on your home. So great, great opportunity there. Uh, and then you've got these, these like there's this new age of, of franchisors that bring in, um, you know, excellent marketing. They've got call centers. So they do all the marketing. All those leads flow to a call center. In the US, we've got trained, you know, people on the phones booking those customers like on your sales guys appointments, you know, using AI for different chatbots and 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 different things for estimating and, and the follow-up process. And there there are some like cutting edge franchises ors that like franchisees like me can can you can get in early. You can great you know get great markets. Um because what's going to happen is a lot of these brands are going to sell out, right? And then, and then, then you know, continues and those be, they'll be copycats and all that stuff. But um, anyway, I'm I'm pretty excited about that. And uh, like like you said, I, I we were talking about earlier. I think you know this year, election year, there's going to be a ton and ton of noise. You know, ungodly amounts of money being spent on uh, you know political parties, foreign countries, all this stuff. There's going to be a ton of ton of noise, and I think. You know, listen, f fear creates opportunity, right? Where th th other people thinking maybe uh, maybe I should slow down, maybe I should sell my business, maybe I should get out of this, maybe I should take my money and run. You know, could be an opportunity for somebody who's in the game to to buy out other franchisees. Uh, could be an opportunity for you to buy into one. Could be out to buy competitors. You know, if you're, you know, in a in a in a painting company and there's another painting company you can buy, get all the people, get all the resources, contacts. Like, I don't know. When there's when there's uneasy stuff, right? There's always opportunity. I want to take a moment to share something very important right now. Are you trying to figure out how to protect your savings from the banking collapse, which has already started, and the coming financial crisis? Most banks will fail. Deposits that are not insured by the FDIC will be lost, and there will be bank bail-ins. And this collapse in the banking system will lead to chaos in the financial system. Banks also provide loans to real estate investors. So what do you think is going to happen to lending in the event of a banking and a financial crisis? You can be proactive and position your savings to protect it and also have access to it to use it to buy discounted assets by positioning it in your own banking system through the infinite banking concept strategy. Producers Wealth has put together a presentation at yourownbankingsystem.com where you will learn how to position capital outside of the banking system and the Wall, Wall Street casino, just like the ultra-wealthy, to protect it and create a pool of tax-free liquid capital to capitalize on the massive opportunity to buy discounted assets, which is coming. You can access the presentation at yourownbankingsystem.com. That's yourownbankingsystem.com. Very well said. Um, that was one of the questions that I had. We've got the baby boomers, obviously, you know, what's it, 75, 76 million of them, uh, yep. all kind of in, going into their retirement years. So you're seeing a lot of that opportunity in in franchises, I'm assuming, uh, as oh, well. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, you know, franchises are just businesses that, that operate within rules, but all the same principles apply. And, you know, we look at, you know, kind of my growth from, you know, we had six locations in I don't know, 20, 2016, we got up to 12 locations by 2021. And then we got you know, 33 locations today over the last you know, three, three years. Almost all of them have been 
growth through acquisition, where we went out and we acquired uh, you know, guys that wanted to retire and, and their kids didn't want the business. And they were you know, like, I'm like five people's retirement plan in that, in that business. And, you know, that's been, that's been a great opportunity. And I think that will continue in, in every brand and in every industry, n- no matter what, you know? So, uh, but you gotta be in the game. I think it's, it's really hard for outsiders, especially in franchising. Like it's hard for outsiders to break in you know, to, to buy an existing one because franchisees want to sell to other franchisees. Like they're friends, like they go to the same meetings, they hang out, like we share employees, we share marketing ideas. Like they all know me. Right. And like, you know, I'm on the committees and the boards and right. Like there's a strategy here, right. If you want to be known, you want to be liked, you want to be trusted, all that, all that stuff. Uh, but, but once you can achieve that, you know, franchisees, they, they want to sell to other franchisees. So when somebody wants to sell in my market or even outside of my market, but you know, they know me, you know, hey, do you want to buy this shop in Florida? Do you want to buy this? Do you want to buy that? And so they come to me with with opportunity. I think that is like a huge competitive advantage. So then I've got first stab at it. If I don't buy it, another franchise is going to buy it. And it's never going to hit the open market. And so, or if it does, it's ones that nobody else wants, right? Um, and so that's like a big part of like getting in the game and 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 then and then just like starting to take action on it. Yep. There's an inside game in every single uh, market, right? In every single asset class and niche, yep. there's like an inside game. It's the same. You can relate that to real estate where there's deals that'll never, ever see the uh, just uh, the listings. Yeah. Uh, yeah, all yeah. the big apartment buildings, I'm sure, just go to like between the syndicators and the big players, right? That's uh, it. You will never, ever, ever see that listed anywhere by a broker or or an agent. Um, so just to recap, though, for franchises, so you're buying a business in a box, basically, right? You're buying a, an established brand. And with that, obviously, comes the marketing. You're buying the systems, uh, the playbook. You're buying support. Um, and then, you know, obviously, um, there's ongoing actual support, people that you can call, yep. and then a community of people in that in that industry that you just mentioned. It gets you, it gets you inside the game. Um, anything else that you want to add there? And also, what is then the, the trade-offs? Because there's always trade-offs, yep. right? Oh, yeah. So what on the 100%. other side, maybe you can talk to, um, you know, what from a fee standpoint, like what is the expectation on the other side? Why, what, what, what do they get? Um, and then if there's, if there are any like pitfalls or things people should be aware of when they're buying a franchise. Yep. Yeah, that's great. Um, yeah, you hit all of them. I think one of the ones just to, to really hit home to is, is, is the community that I think a lot of people don't know about, right? Cause you don't know about the community until you're in it. But, you know, for me, a lot of my friends or, or people, we, we all operate the exact same model all over the country. And like, it's in everybody's best interest to help each other. Like, cause if, if I can grow my sales and he can grow his sales, like a, we attract more people that we can sell these things at higher multiples. And so there's this constant, you know, communication, sharing best practices, ideas, challenging, I'm piling in a new idea. And if it works for me, like they'll spread it across the country or a guy in California came up with something that really works that gets spread out. Like, you know, I, I don't know if most people know this, but like the Big Mac was created by a franchisee, like in Pittsburgh, I think the filet fish was created by a franchisee, like every, every in McDonald's, almost all the popular meals were created by franchisees. And so that's like, it's like a mastermind, right? Where you've got all these people and they're all trying to achieve the same goal and they all want to help each other. Um, now, not once again, not every brand has that, that same strong thing. And that's, that's part of the due diligence, um, that, that we coach people on is like really try to understand the community aspect because it's, it's, it can be one of the most powerful parts of it. Uh, in terms of downsides. Yeah. I mean, there's, you know, a, you got to play within the rules. So you got to understand the rules like in what they are. And so, you know, in automotive, like, like we have certain services that we, you know, we kind of have to offer and we do, and there's certain things like we really shouldn't do now. Every, every brand's a little bit different, but like, we're not going to get into like auto glass or like tinting or like, you know, stereo systems, remote starts, like customization. We're not going to get into body work. Right. Uh, now, if we did it, we ran it through a point of sale and we paid royalties, would they, would anybody care? Probably not. But like, it's not like, it's not within the brand standard, like, you know, cause we're Midas and Midas does general auto repair. If I start doing direct mail and TV and radio stuff about, you know, doing body work, and then they go to another Midas that I don't own and expect to get body work done, you know, it's a bad experience for the customer. Right. And so you have to, you have to be okay living within like the, the scope of services that, that they want. And so, so for some people who are really like, uh, you know, they have a million ideas and they want to try all these things. And it's kind of like, whoa, 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 like here's the system. Here's what works. Like, just do this thing. Right. And, and 
you know, if you want to do that other type of business, maybe go find another business that does just that, but don't try to like cram it into our thing. Um, so that would be, that'd be a, that, that's a big one. You know, you're signing a contract that's like 10 years, most of them, 10 to 15 years, depends on the, depends on the brand. Um, and so, you, you know, it's a big commitment, right? That you're going to, you're going to operate this thing, uh, or it's like, it's, you're renting the brand, right? In a franchise, you don't own it. You, you rent the brand, you rent the business model. And so you've got like a lease that so you're going to lease this thing for, for 10 years. And if you decide after five years that you want to get out of it, or, you know, you want to move, you're not making any money you can do something else, whatever, uh, you know, you, you've got a couple options. One, you can sell it, right? So that's like me buying another franchise. Like I'm basically buying out their agreement and, and taking it over. And a lot of times I'm getting a new agreement. Um, you can obviously inside or outside or whatever. If if you can't find a buyer and you choose to shut it down, just say, hey, I'm, I'm walking away from this thing. Uh, you know, depending on the, the, what, what it says, like y- there could be some penalties, right? So they could, you could have like liquidated damages where they say, hey, well, you know, you cut five years short, you know, you owe us five years of projected royalties. And, you know, that could be, that could be a lot of money. And so there's ways you can negotiate, cap that number, eliminate that clause, right? There's, there's certain downsides that if you know what you're getting into that, that you can protect yourself. That's honestly the biggest, the biggest downside is you're, you're, you feel like you're stuck. And, that, and for me, that was one, the one of the brands that failed is, you know, it was a 15 year contract. Now for three years, like I was losing money. I was like, I got to get out of this thing. And they said, well, if you shut it down, we're going to like, you know, sue you for these, this, these lost royalties. And so I ended up, you know, I ended up selling it to somebody for a dollar to get out of it. But that was like one of the brands that's like a terrible brand. Right. And so Mm. there's this whole spectrum in franchising where there's some really good ones that you can make millions of dollars. And there's ones like, like these, these, these other ones that, uh, you know, aren't, aren't friendly. And so that's like, that's all part of like what you really have to dig in and and making sure you're, you're making the right choice. Um, and I didn't know any of that stuff. And that's like, that's one of my goals in teaching and coming on podcasts. And I have courses and content and all this, all this stuff is to teach people like what to look out for and how to like ask the right questions to, to determine, you know, what you're comfortable signing. Cause at the end of the day, you can try to negotiate things, you know, newer brands, you've got leverage, you know, established brands, n- not so much. Uh, it's, it's not a matter of like, can you get the best deal? It's, are you comfortable and understand like what you're agreeing to? I want to take a moment to recognize one of our sponsors, Penumbra Solutions. Life Settlements Investments have allowed financial and banking institutions to not only buy their equity contractually, but also diversify their capital from any economic, market, and geopolitical risk. It's been part of the billion-dollar blueprint followed by institutional investors. If you're an accredited investor, you can also now participate in this vehicle with enormous growth potential. You can watch an informational webinar presented by one of the premier organizations providing life settlement investments, Penumbra Solutions, at CashflowNinja.com forward slash life settlements. That's CashflowNinja.com forward slash life settlements. The password to access that webinar is Penumbra, all lowercase. And then uh, the other question that I had for you is you mentioned home services, and that's that's what I can see. I mean, I see... You, you know, you mentioned the painting franchise. I see so much opportunity, like in the physical stuff. You know, yeah, the, the, the when there's plumbing, never, uh, AI, or electri- uh, electricians, and yeah. all the you know all all of these uh, skilled um, kind of like crafts, right? Uh, there's so much opportunity there. Um, maybe you could expand on that, and just what other areas are you seeing a ton of opportunity within franchises? Yeah. So yeah, home services, everything that, that touches your house, right? So we got paint. Handyman, you know, HVAC, plumbing, roofing, blinds, closets, like l- landscaping, fencing, like the list goes on. There's tons and tons of stuff. Um, and then there's like, so then there's other mobile concepts, right? So that's in the mobile space. What people like about that is that it's, you know, you don't have this big lease. Like you go into like a class, you, you open, I want to open like a fitness studio, like a, like a boutique, you know, high-end fitness studio or whatever. You're going into a 1500 square foot, um, you know, box next to like a Starbucks or Lululemon or like whatever, you're paying like, you know, in our area, at least it's a hundred thousand dollars, $120,000 a year with like cam and taxes and everything. And then you got about three to $400,000 build out. So you've got a ton of money to build it out. You've got this huge nut every month. You need people staffed at that place, like 
all of all the hours. And obviously your goal is to sell enough memberships or product or whatever it is to, to, to make some money, but there's like some pretty good downside to it. Um, and some of the people do really well and, and some of the people like really, really struggle. And so, um, so what we like, like about the mobile franchises is that you don't have this big lease of like class. Yeah, you might have like a warehouse or storage facility or whatever. You don't have a big build out. You can get started in like 90 days versus like, you know, it could take a year, nine months to a year to find like that perfect spot, get the contractors, build it all out, do your pre-launch, you know, and, and before you're ready to roll. And then with most with most franchises, you, you got to own a bunch of them. Like you, you own one, you might make a hundred grand. You own 10, you might make a million, Right. So like if you're in if you're in some of these retail things that take, you know, eight, nine months to build out one, like it could take you five years to get to five, right? And maybe the margins are better and, and stuff, but um it's a lot slower than you know painting. I'm gonna launch three at once. I'm gonna have six locations rolling, you know, uh by this time next year and and over and over, you know, we'll probably hit 15 by, you know, in, in two years. Like it's it's the speed to scale, I think is amazing. So in that category of mobile, there's there's other stuff too. So you've got uh, there's a new one that I really like. Uh, it's a gym. It's this mobile personal training. So it's like the, the the world's largest mobile personal training. So they basically send a trainer to you who's got this van that has everything you need, right? So they've got like the kettlebells and the dumbbells and the ro- slam ropes and the bands and the step ups. And and so then they're doing like, you know, a one-on-one with you or you, you, you and your wife are doing it or you get your kids involved. And so that they go mobile. They also go with businesses. So now they're going to like, they're going to like a hospital to put on a program for all the employees or all like, like he told me they signed one of their franchisees signed this like $50,000 a month contract with like the state of like, I don't know, South Carolina or something where they're like basically going to all these facilities. They're teaching health and wellness and meal prep. And like, they've got this whole like, you know, wellness component about it. And then they're doing in-person classes, apartment buildings are like hiring them. And then, you know, high-end apartment buildings and tenants are signing up for like group classes. Right. So like, it's pretty amazing. Like you've got this model where, you know, personal training has been around forever. Like the Peloton becomes a coat hanger, right? The, the tr- there's all these other trends. They're super trendy. So for people that want to get into fitness, you know, but don't want to spend all that money on that big studio, you can get in this mobile business and, you know, y- you can build it up to, you know, t- two trainers to five trainers to 10 trainers. You buy more and more territory. You promote your guy, like your best guy becomes your regional manager who becomes a territory manager. Now, like, he wants to be a partner and you say, Hey, look, are you willing to move to like, you know, two hours away and you, you buy a bunch of territory, you start this guy who knows how to run the business and you scale it. Like, like that's the kind of concepts you can work through. Um, there's things in pet care. I think senior cares is like a, an amazing business. I'm, I'm a partner in a senior care franchise where, you know, we, I, I have a really good operating partner. I, I, we're not involved in the day to day, but he, he, um, he would go out and he hires caretakers and and you know has them take care of of seniors who want you know non medical in home care, where most people who are aging want to age in place. They don't want to go to a nursing home. Yep. Uh, you know the the kids you know don't have time and to you know because they're working and stuff and have their families. But you know your mom needs help with the dishes and like getting dressed and like chores around the house and just like someone to hang out with, right? Um, and so. Can, it's an amazing recurring revenue kind of business. There's infinite demand as people age. The biggest challenge is caretakers, right? It's, it's firing, yep. it's, it's, it's hiring and retaining quality people and it's hyper competitive. Um, and so, you know, obviously it's like, you got to be really good at creating the system and this culture that that rewards and retains those people. But I mean, we're going to build, I mean, we're going to build this, you know, multi, multi-million dollar business at a really good margin, uh, and so I think that's an excellent space, but you know, you got to be involved in it. Like for most people, they got to be passionate about seniors. They got to, he's, he's working it every day. Like that's not passive at all. Like it's passive for me, but cause I'm the investor, but for, for the operator, it is a hands-on business. Um, so anyway, there, there's just some more, there's obviously more like there's stuff in pet care, there's stuff in other personal care that I think is pretty interesting. Um, but, but all of them are the same theme of like, you can get started in these things for like, I don't know. 100 to 150,000 per per location or per unit or whatever. You know, you have the ability to start with one and then go to two to five to 10, build out a whole infrastructure uh and and scale it. It's interesting though the the senior care plays into a trend over the last 3 years too right. where people, you know, they at one stage couldn't even visit their loved ones, right? They were kind of locked locked out. Yeah. So yeah. their loved ones were in let's just say uh, yeah, they were in a facility, and then the, yeah, they couldn't couldn't access them. So now a lot of people are looking at the well. 
let's get mom or dad and get an extra room in the house or get someone to come to them so they could yep. they could still see them. So it's interesting how that plays out, the pet care. Um, what a question for you. At one stage in the franchising world, I saw like ghost kitchens was like the thing, right? Um, or is it still, is it, what, is it, is it, is it a trend that it's kind of gone away or? No, yeah, it's not, it's not. And, and a lot of the, those ghost kitchens too, were more like major players. Like it's the PJ Willihans or like the Chili's or whatever is cooking the yeah. Mexican food for the other place. Um, you know, in the food space, I don't, you know, it's a similar problem of, you know, you've got these high build outs, you know, and it's a question of, you know, there's some brands that are like, you know, health, health food brands, like they do, you know, Aussie bowls and like you know, ju juices and nitro brews and stuff. And they don't have any uh, fr um, fryers or cook. So they don't need any, any ventilation. If you don't need any ventilation, you can go into any facility and, you know, it's a whole lot cheaper. If, if you're, if you're like a wing, a wing stop or whatever, you yep. got to go into a place that has a second gen, you know, it has existing ventilation that you can utilize. If not, you know, your build out cost is probably 500 grand to, to build all the ventilation, the fans and the fryers and the drains and all the shit. And so um, there's a huge variance there. Gotcha. On the, on the food side. I want to acknowledge one of our sponsors. Are you ready to ride the wave of success in the booming car wash industry? Tommy's Express Car Wash is the cutting edge brand that is revolutionizing the way we clean vehicles. Demand for top notch state of the art tunnel car wash is skyrocketing. Institutions are diving in head first and the real asset investor is already a step ahead. They have a world-class operations team and they're building a portfolio of Tommy's Express car washes that's on track to become one of the largest privately owned car wash portfolios in the United States. The margins on a stabilized Tommy's Express car wash are incredible and accredited investors have the chance to join them on their adventure. Dave Zook, the founder and CEO of The Real Asset Investor and his team are thrilled to share opportunities like Tommy's Car Wash with accredited investors that boost your cash flow, unlocks massive tax benefits, and get you set up for a lucrative exit just a few years from now. To learn more about the opportunities offered by The Real Asset Investor, you can reach out to them at info at therealassetinvestor.com. That's info at therealassetinvestor.com. That's what you mentioned earlier, you know, the just the, the the build out and then, of course, the cost, just the carrying costs. Right? If you're the real estate investor that owns the property, because yep. you you mentioned the CAM common area maintenance, that's, those are usually triple net even, leases too, right? Yeah, even me, like that's You're our bottleneck. You're responsible for everything as the franchisee, the real estate investor's yep. got a triple net lease with you. That's I mean, that's our problem in the in the auto repair business is, you know, we we are, you know, we, we are retail automotive. We need four thousand square foot on a major road that's not too not too close to an existing you know uh, you know store. And, and it's just, it's so hard to f find the real estate and, or that, you know, we find real estate, but now we're competing with other major players like Pep Boys and Mavis and, you know, pe people that maybe in the past, you know, weren't, you know, they're all private equity backed and, you know, they're willing to pay a whole lot more. Their unit economics are just different than ours. And so, you know, it just becomes harder and harder for us to, com to, to find the property. So our options are like, A, we, you know, we, we find something and we, we, we buy and we build it. Right. Um, that could be $2 million. And it, unless we're like super confident about the location, like it, it may not make money, uh, or we have to like extend ourselves and say, Hey, we're going to go to like Harrisburg or Baltimore or New York city or, or something like, like a stretch wide. But then that adds, you know, just, just tons of, of logistical complications and we can't have one store like five hours away. We need like five stores, five hours away. And so, that's like a bottleneck we're running into and in a big part of why we're saying, Hey, well, what if we got, you know, that's the yin. What if we got a yang that, that had zero real estate that we could, we could just expand like this, that were sales driven, people driven. We have really good people existing on our team that we could transport over. And then, you know, same culture, same idea, same leadership, same technology platform, like all the same stuff. We're just selling a different service. Right. And so I think, I think understanding kind of that, that real estate and that growth pattern is, is, is like critical. And, you know, for somebody that really wants to grow like this mobile business, while it has like logistical complications where, 
not everybody reports like you can't just like go to a store and see everybody right like you've got all these people all, all over these plays uh i think there's ways i think there's ways you can manage that through through technology right we've got daily check-ins you've got video calls you've got you know in, you still got in-person meetings uh but if you can if you can make that team feel cohesive and you can manage that like there's no limit right or well, real estate there's there's always a limit uh to it and just it's it all depends kind of what what speed you want to grow and and what kind of business you want to run I want to run big businesses. I don't want to run one one thing, you know. Yeah, no, it's a lot. A lot of great points. It's it's back to the thing where, like you said, it's because you don't have that real estate component. It's so easy to scale and buy buy more of them. Where the physical stuff, it's it's. I mean, I, I like the I like the innovation that's going on. This mobile kind of franchises that you mentioned, the senior care, the personal training, pet care. I'm assuming there could be. Uh, uh, you know, a ton of mobile franchises when it comes to yep. pet care too. Yeah, pet. They, they go to your come... house. They wash your dog, clean its ears, cut its nails, like shave it, play with it. You know, like, like whatever. Um, <laughs> but for a lot of people, like getting your dog over to the yeah. groomer or whatever, like, is not easy. If the dog's not good, and like, and people don't have time, right? And so, like, a lot of people, you know, especially in the higher income areas, are, are more than willing to pay a premium for someone to come to their house once a month and just and just take care of it for them, right? Like, people pay for convenience, like. We know that more than anything else, like, and and that is not going to change. Like, if anything, it's only going to get like worse in a sense that people are willing to pay more and more for convenience. And so, I think mobile, go in your house, on demand, like those are the businesses that are are, are trendy, right? Even the, the personal trainer, that personal trainer just like comes to your house, like you don't have to go to the gym, like, and like high, highly accountable because they're like they're showing up at your house. It's not like you got to even drive there and you have like no excuse. Yeah, uh, and so I, I think that's like. I, I think you know anything that's that is it makes things more convenient for people uh and and delivers great value is is a is a good business model so if we have some of our listeners and viewers listening to our conversation and they're thinking okay this is the year that i would be interested in exploring franchises and buying a franchise what are the ducks that they need to get in a row to just position themselves to take action and buy a franchise yeah, I think the first is to really understand, like we we help people look at four things that says everybody's different. And and what I think is a good business for me could be a terrible business for you, right? Uh, and so a lot of it is, is you want to find something that matches your goals. So like, A, what are you trying to achieve? Are you trying to like replace current income? Are you doing it for lifestyle? Is it an investment? For me, painting's an investment. I don't like, it's, it's nothing more than that. Uh, are you doing it for passion? Like you say, hey, I'm really passionate about helping senior people or I want to get into, I want my kids to be involved in it. I want a business my kids can be involved in. I'm going to get into this like, you know, gourmet ice cream popsicle thing or like whatever it is, right? So A, like what are your goals? Like why are you doing this? You need to understand that driving force. That's like, that plays a key role in this. Like what are your skills? Like my skill is B2C, mass market, consumer, highly fragmented, you know, auto repair, paint, like lead funnels, call center, sales process. Like that's my, my skill set. I am terrible at, at B2B. Like those other two franchises I failed in were both B2B, which is like, you need to be a, a relationship guy where you're going, you're building a relationship, you're buying them donuts. Like you're, you're like highly involved, invested in the relationships. And that is not me. Right. And so I think understanding, like, what are your skills? What are you good at? Uh, from, from like a, the type of business you you want to run is is the second thing. Number two is is the location. So w where do you live? Right. There's certain concepts like if you if you want to get into a power washing business, if if you live below, you know, a freezing line, you can you can you know the business runs twelve months a year. You live up in Maine. You live in Chicago. Like you might be down for for three months a year. And some people are okay with that. Some people say no, I don't want like a seasonal business at all. And so location matters. Um, then you've got you know budget, right? How much you're gonna spend? Like, there's franchises you can get in for fifty thousand dollars, a hundred thousand, because you're per location, right? Two hundred thousand. There's there's five hundred a million plus, and so uh, there's lots of ways to finance it. Like the SBA is super franchise friendly, uh, and so what we see a lot of people doing is, you know, say they want to they want a growth plan. They say, hey, I'm gonna find this franchise. It's a hundred thousand dollars per like per location, which includes like working capital and, and grand opening marketing and franchise fees, all this stuff. And they say, I'm going to go to the SBA. So five locations, it's going to cost me 500 grand. They go to the SBA. 
there's like there's like franchise friendly you know brokers and stuff and all that and they say you know all right we'll lend you 80 percent and so then they get they, they come with 100 grand down you know they get they get the loan for the rest and then they're able to like you know kind of have this this pretty big territory that they can grow and, and expand into and so uh understanding a how much cash do you want to put in do you want to take on debt some people just don't want to take debt or they've got life insurance or they've got a heloc or they roll over a 401k to, to fund the franchise where they raise money from friends and family, you know, whatever, whatever. There's tons, tons of options. Um, is is understanding what is your budget and like honestly, a, a lot of it's like you, you gotta have you gotta have cash like dry powder after you open it. Like sometimes these things take longer than you think to ramp them up. And like the worst thing any business owner can do is run out of cash, right? So uh, that's the, that's like a huge part is making sure you like you've got a really good buffer uh, that you, that you can you know that, that you have time to grow this thing and you're not like super stressed out about it. So um, those are the four things I, uh, that we advise people to really kind of think about is is their goals, their skills, you know, what makes sense for where they live, and then like their budget in terms of investable cash they're comfortable with, and, and do they want to take on additional debt? And so that, that's where we start. And they can do it on their own. Like there are two options, right? You can do it on your own. You can like search all these websites. A lot of them are sponsored and, and, and stuff. And so it, it's hard to find the good ones. Or you know, you work with a with a like you know, my team, uh, and what we do is. You know, all those things. We interview them. We have we have a we have a list of over seven hundred brands that we work with. But of the seven hundred, we kind of have about fifty or thirty to fifty that we really kind of know and like. And then we probably have about ten or so that we like. We've done a ton of deals when we know we know them very well. And so then, you know, our goal is to find the brands that match, introduce the candidate to you know the brand, provide them a whole bunch of due diligence resources. Like here's twenty five questions to ask the franchisor. Here's twenty five questions to ask other franchisees. Here's you know, we have, I have this whole course on due diligence of all this, all the stuff that we talked about, and then uh, you know, walk them through the process, and the brand then takes them through their process, and doesn't cost people anything. You know, br- the brands pay us a commission, so it's like a buy, it's like being a buy side uh, real estate agent. We, we, we represent the client, helping them go and find a brand, and uh, so it creates some win wins. And anyway, that that would be like that would be the best process to go down, or the quickest at least. We are in the beginning of another Bitcoin cycle. Many listeners and viewers have reached out to me asking me how they can safely buy, secure, and store Bitcoin and how they can set up an automated Bitcoin savings account. I've used Swan Bitcoin to dollar cost average throughout the entire Bitcoin cycle with an automated Bitcoin savings account. You can start your Bitcoin savings account at www.swanbitcoin.com forward slash Cash flow ninja and get ten dollars free in Bitcoin. Brian, I really appreciate you coming on and, and sharing this and providing so much in, uh, value as usual. And I really enjoy and appreciate our conversations. You'd mention uh, for folks that that if they're interested in exploring it, um, you guys offer offer that service. How do they? Where where is good places for them to go in the different things that you do? How can they? Uh, reach out and then how can they stay informed of all the many projects you're involved with? Yeah. So uh, I'm the most active on on Twitter, uh, X, whatever you want to call it, uh, at Brian Beers, I've got like an orange, an orange background. You'll, you'll, I'm the only Brian Beers. Um, and sorry, I'm, I'm the most active there. Anybody's on there. Like uh, I, I talk about, you know, scaling a franchise, scaling my business, buying franchises, due diligence, you know, all this stuff. And so if you're there, you can find me there. You can shoot me a message to tell me heard about it here. That'd be great. Uh, I'm I'm working on LinkedIn. So many professionals on LinkedIn, you know, Brian Beers, they can they can find me there. And and my website, uh, you know, BrianBeers.com is is a work in progress, but we are uh, it's getting it's getting better. And so yeah, if anybody's interested, uh, they can also email me, Brian at beerspodcast.com is is my uh, email. And I've got a podcast as well. I talk about franchises, scaling businesses, all this stuff. And so any of the platforms, find mess find me. It's easy to find me, shoot me a message. And yeah, we'd be happy to help and, and kind of get people rolling. Fantastic. Well, thank you so much again for coming on and providing so much value for my listeners and my viewers. Appreciate you. Have a fantastic uh, and prosperous uh, new year. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And thank you to my listeners and my viewers for spending your most valuable resource, your time once again with me on the show. Everything Cashflow Ninja is at CashflowNinja.com. That's CashflowNinja.com. Until next time, live infinitely. This presentation is for educational and informational purposes only. The information being presented and considered does not consider your particular financial objectives or situation, and it does not make personalized recommendations. This material is not intended 
to replace the advice of a qualified tax and legal advisor or other qualified professionals. And you should not use the information in place of a customized consultation with a licensed professional regarding your specific personal financial objectives, situation, and needs. We believe the information provided is reliable, but we do not guarantee its accuracy, timeliness, or completeness.